Hello friends, David Miller here, Phoenix, Arizona Multimedia Artist. I want to share with you an amazing photographic book that I found at my local Chandler library. It is called Contact High. It's a visual history of hip hop and it was compiled by Vicky Toback. This is a collection of hip hop rap photography from the 70s through the era where film fell out of favor and digital supplanted it. Uh, that happens to coincide with the area that I personally feel strongest about in hip hop history. I was a young man in the late 80s and early 90s. I was in high school until 1995. And uh, up until that time, that era was very, very magical to me. Uh, it was an era where MTV still showed videos and you also had BET and VH1. So I would go home from school, I would watch something like Yo! MTV Raps, I would watch Rap City on BET, and that would be added on to the more alternative type of music that I was into at the time. Uh, like 120 Minutes was a great resource for finding new music, but uh, what the alternative stuff I liked and what the hip hop stuff I liked had in common was that it was utilizing new technology, sampling technology, and it was creating stuff that was kind of, um, I would say a little more Frankenstein together than what you get in the modern era of electronic and hip hop music. Uh, back then, the aesthetic was all about collaging different things of the past to create something new and something that I felt at the time was quite poetic. Uh, my favorite groups of that era were almost exclusively of what you would call the Native Tongues family. So you had Black Sheep, you had De La Soul, Tribe Called Quest. Uh, and then there were early gangster rap pioneers, KRS-One, who at the time was uh, a little more of a peaceful guy, but he definitely was a gangster rap pioneer. Uh, Ice-T, Ice Cube, NWA, Public Enemy, not a gangster rap group, but still you know, pretty hard for what they were up to. Uh, those were the groups that I loved with the strongest passion. Now, from the cover and the name Contact High, as you can see, there's a lot of contact sheets involved here. And for those who don't know, when we shot 35 millimeter film, we put them in sleeves and then we would make a contact print of that so we could see the little thumbnails of what was on the film, pick the ones that were good, make prints out of those. I love looking at contact sheets. I love looking at the alternate versions of what could have been. And and I love seeing the ones that were chosen. You see the little red mark here. You'll see a grease pencil on a lot of the pages where uh, you can tell that the decision was made. These are the good ones. What makes these ones better than the other ones? Is it a particular emotion? Is it a particular placement of shadows? Uh, did people blink in some of the other shots? You know, I love to see the flubs because it reminds us that whether you're Richard Avedon or Ansel Adams or, you know, David Miller, uh, you make mistakes during the photographic process and there's always gonna be flubs. All right, digging into this book, the interior front cover, uh, Questlove from The Roots tells a story about how this is a recreation of some 1950s portrait that included all the jazz luminaries of the day. And in this recreation, there's something in the nature of about 177 of the uh, late 90s artists represented. Here's a good example of a contact sheet. We've got a lot of Africa Bambata stuff here. Uh, not one of my favorite artists, but that of course has more to do with his legal issues than the actual music he made. But as you can see, there's a colored Sharpie or grease pencil that highlights all the images they wanted to use. Break dancing from that era. Glad to know that uh, this photographer's break dancing photos were no better than my break dancing photos during the time period when I was trying to shoot this material and got an awful lot of black frames. These color contact sheets are incredible to me. Uh, this one has a lot of strange coloration. I'm not sure if they were using a filter or if the film faded. It's more likely the film faded over the years, but uh, each one faded a little bit differently. So when they're positioned in this way, it's kind of like a cool rainbow effect. All of these have correct colors. They've been able to stand the test of time. This is Kodak safety film. This is Kodak CM400. So 
Someone a little more knowledgeable about film stocks might know which ones were uh, more durable and which ones were more likely to fade. An incredible shot. And it's one of those where you just have to position yourself in one place and shoot the same thing over and over and over again. You have these kids doing backflips on the nastiest mattresses you've ever, ever seen. I was a huge fan of salt and Peppa when I was a kid. Uh, things like Push It were among the first rap songs I ever heard. And I love how fun and colorful these images are. Um, they're all shot against pure white, which is kind of my personal aesthetic for shooting these days. Uh, you can't really beat that. If you have pure white background, and you have really colorful people, they're absolutely going to pop and stand out. I think if you walked into a record store and saw a record that had a cover of any of these images from across the room, you would absolutely take notice of it over all other album covers. EPMD, this location is the kind of place that I would end up shooting and uh, do my damnedest to make something cool out of, but it's really, really difficult when you have concrete, water, and a complete empty sky, and there's nothing significant about each one. What can you do with that picture? And I think they pulled it off by introducing the vehicles, the suits, having symmetry there with dead end in the middle. Uh, this actually says something. And without one of those elements, uh, you have some where it's just the duo with the suits and you don't have the sign, you don't have the vehicles. I don't think it really tells you anything about them. It's just a sea of blue. And I don't mean a literal sea by the water behind them. It just is all one thing, but this is good storytelling. Slick Rick comes across as a real character, seems like a good person to take photos of. These Cypress Hill shots, uh, I'm sure they're effective for what they are, but they're a good example of guys who don't seem to have a lot of personality in front of the camera. They show up and do what they do. They might throw up some signs. Uh, that's one of the difficulties I have found working with male models. They don't do a whole lot with their body, at least the ones that I have worked with. I know there are athletic people and actors and other male talent that would be able to um, put a little life into their shots. But most of the time I have found that guys just kind of stand around and think that's enough, you know? And most of the, the uh, female models I work with really put a lot of effort into expressing with their body. This one's really interesting to me. I never was a fan of Red Man, but I always remember this album cover because there was a period in my life where I worked in record stores and I remember putting this one away and wondering, you know, is he really buried in the dirt? And the truth is, he truly is. Uh, this was shot by Danny Clinch and they stuck him in a green garbage bag, buried him, and then when an assistant walked near Redman, apparently totally freaked out. I suppose if it were me, I would be exactly the same. Uh, but that is just such a strange idea. We're gonna bury you up to your neck in front of these towers. Then I wanted to end on this one. There's certainly a lot more to this book, but this Goody Mob cover has so many cool tones to it. This heavy red and this green underneath here, uh, a lot of Afrocentrism with the color choices. I'm not sure what makes the red there. I'm wondering if it's like a red filter that is placed partially down uh, when the shot was taken, but everybody's in a different level in the water. They're not all four high or all four low, and they're staggered. I think this is a really cool piece of art. It's just really well thought out, and it is by Brian B. Cross. So there you have it, Contact High. Whether you're a fan of old school hip hop or 35 millimeter film photography, a little bit of both, uh, this book is an amazing resource. I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like I, this book is an amazing resource. I felt like I learned an awful lot about the photographers, the artists involved, and I felt like I have a greater understanding about the thought process that goes into crafting uh, not just album covers, but how other artists want to represent themselves visually. We live in an era where every band has an Instagram and they have built a vision around that Instagram if they're smart. You know, this is how they did it old school. Highly recommended. 
If it's not your local library, go on Amazon, order it. You won't regret it.